Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, Best Game Cox podcast on the internet. Today is Tuesday, March the 23rd, 2021. Today's show, I break down tonight's game as Game Cox Baseball returns to action the midweek to take on the Citadel Bulldogs once again in this 2021 baseball season. Guys, we'll talk Citadel in their entirety, break down their pitching, hitting, also talk South Carolina, what to watch for, key player for the night. I'll give my prediction for the game, guys, much, much more from there as well. Also, few news and notes to get into, guys. We've got a pack show here on a Tuesday, and it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention on the companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company, by the way. They're a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. Their movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing service services, custom crating and packaging for special items, and cleaning services as well. They are founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni guys, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether you're in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, if you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group, or of course, if you have any other questions go to their website upstatemoversgroup.com that's upstatemoversgroup.com be sure to check them out and tell them chris from the spurs up show sent you the show is also brought to you by our friends over at my bookie guys march is here the madness has officially begun it's time for you to shoot your shot and score big on the non-stop action with my bookie guys you can select the winners from 63 tournament games in the my bookie bracket contest for a chance at ten thousand dollars in cash prizes and get this it's only a dollar to enter guys it doesn't matter whether you're filling out multiple brackets betting the national championship winner or simply looking for player and game props my bookie has you covered guys you can sign up today at mybookie.ag and use the promo code gamecocks again that's promo code gamecocks to secure a deposit bonus bonus up to a thousand dollars and guys make sure that you use my promo codes they know that i hooked you up that's promo code gamecocks to claim your first deposit bonus again guys college ball nba nhl no matter the sport no matter the minute my bookie puts the action in your hands with in-game live betting and with choice from thousands of lines and odds you can turn any game day into payday guys bet anything anytime anywhere with my bookie let's get it Yo, what is up, guys? I'm Chris Phillips, host of the Spurs Up Show, as always. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're all doing well. Very excited to chat with you guys today. We are talking Carolina baseball as the Gamecocks return to action tonight at Founders Park, taking on the Citadel. Guys, again, hope you're all doing well. Fantastic day. A beautiful day in the city. Man, it, you know, spring finally hit, right? March 21st, officially the spring solstice, all that good stuff. I'll tell you what, the weather, at least in Columbia, South Carolina, is turning that way. We got like mid-70s. I think I saw some high 70s, maybe even low 80s this weekend. It's officially baseball weather. Baseball weather's back. What's wild to me, though, is this. Literally, March is over next week. Like, I I can't believe, where did March go? I I mean, it feels like we just started the month of March, and it's already over. Like, I'm already not liking how quickly 2021 is going by. But again, guys... Hope you're all doing well. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. Let's go ahead and without further ado, dive into this game because we've got a very 
Exciting and intriguing midweek game tonight, guys. The Gamecocks once again take on the Citadel Bulldogs. First pitch tonight at 7 o'clock at Founders Park. Game can be watched on SEC Network Plus. Yours truly will be in the stadium at Founders Park, but SEC Network Plus for those of you at home. Of course, guys, the Citadel of the SOCON, their head coach, Tony Skoll. And you'll remember, guys, when South Carolina took on the Citadel just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we're scuffling a little bit. They've actually played pretty well since then, sitting at eight and nine right now, one and two overall in conference play, but in play and have been playing some good baseball of late. When you look at their pitching staff, a four, seven, three team ERA overall, their hitters are hitting 290 on the year. Players to watch for for Citadel. Uh, we all remember this name, outfielder Jeffrey Brown, guys, went five for five in that last game right now in the season. He is hitting 373 for the Citadel, a homer and five RBIs. Really, really good player at the top of their lineup. Infielder Tyler Corbett's another one hitting 344, leading the Bulldogs with four home runs and 11 RBIs. And then outfielder Ryan McCarthy, another big basher for them, hitting 273, three homers on the year and 12 RBIs on this early season, guys. We take a look at the South Carolina side of things. The Gamecocks will be starting right-handed pitcher Will Sanders yet again. Um, obviously started him last week. He only went an inning. The Gamecocks went with the Johnny Holstaff approach. It'll be interesting to see how long Sanders will go in this one. You know, you think about last week, and I think the difference is with that game last week being slid to Wednesday instead of Tuesday, did that, did that affect your, your game plan, how you used your pitchers, all that stuff? I'll be interested to see what the Gamecocks do in regards to how they're going to use their pitching staff in this one. And that we, with that being said, without further ado, let's move into what to watch for in this Tuesday matchup. As again, the Gamecocks take on the Citadel Bulldogs. And again, I think the first thing you got to start with is the rematch in this one. And normally, you don't think much of a, of a midweek matchup or, or a midweek rematch, if you will, right? You know, it's a midweek game, whatever. You know, fans, at least in the heads of the fans, you guys are thinking, oh, not a big deal, just the midweek, blah, blah, blah. This game has got some juice to it, in my opinion. I, I think we all remember the, the sequence of events that happened towards the end of that South Carolina Citadel game the last time. If you guys don't remember, it was 6-5 to five Citadel going into the top of the eighth inning. Citadel had been jawing a little bit. You remember they had the left-handed pitcher that strutted off the field and was cursing out the Carolina dugout, and, and they had the closers sprinting from the bullpen, and they had all kinds of stuff going on. I went as far as to call them slapdicks. If, if you guys don't remember that, that was that night. So, again, South kind of found themselves down 6-5 to five in the top of the eighth, scored six runs in the top of the eighth, to stay undefeated and keep the perfect season alive at that point. The Gamecocks improved to 11-0 and on the season at that point, and then Citadel dropped to 4-7 and in that game. But overall, a really, really interesting rematch. Like I told you guys the first time, this was a big game for Citadel, and it's a big game for Citadel to take on South Carolina. Of course, their pitching coach, Blake Cooper, friend of the show, friend of mine, and you know he had told me before they were going to come in fired up, ready to go, throwing their best arms and really bringing it to South Carolina, and I thought they did that. I thought you certainly saw that the last time these two teams met. Again, I don't look at this game as just any other – you know, kind of just casual midweek matchup. Like, oh, these two teams have a little bit of history. And you know Citadel's going to be coming into Columbia wanting some revenge on South Carolina, going to have some some uh, a chip on their shoulder, if you will. I would certainly imagine. I, I wonder what that looks like. I wonder how the intensity will compare from Charleston to Columbia. Because, again, I was actually really surprised at the way that game unfolded and the the intensity of it and the emotion of it. And, you know, really both sides. I mean, Jaw and you, we remember Colin Burgess at the end of that game hushing the Citadel dugout. I mean, things like that are things that I just would have never expected in that first matchup. So I wonder in this one, what will the emotions, what will the energy be like? And, again, this is not your typical whatever kind of ho-hum, you know, uh, midweek matchup. This one's personal. I think this one's got an edge to it. I think this one's got some juice to it. I think it should be a lot of fun to watch for sure when these two teams take on each other in the rematch. And the final on that one, by the way, if I didn't mention, 11-7 to seven was the final in that last game. So, again, going to be a lot of fun to watch. Something I know all fans, and I've been getting this question a lot, something fans will be watching for, like I said, I've been getting this question a ton from you guys. What is the approach going to be on the mound? Because we saw the Johnny Holstaff thing in action last week, and, and we saw what can happen when it goes horribly wrong in the sense of guys coming out of the bullpen and just not doing their jobs, jobs just not throwing well. Guys coming out and struggling in the game lasting four and a half hours. And I know nobody, 
Nobody, including yours truly, wants to go through another Tuesday or Wednesday game like we had last week. I mean, that was absolutely brutal. So the question is this, does South Carolina go the Johnny Holstaff quote-unquote approach, or do they stretch Will Sanders out and let him go four, five, six innings? Well, guys, you look back even at that Citadel game, and this is how it broke down last time in Charleston. Josiah Seitler went two innings. Mag Cotto went an inning and two-thirds. Will Sanders went an inning and a third. Wesley Sweat Sweat went two-thirds. Jackson Phipps went two-thirds. And Andrew Peters went two and two-thirds in that game. You look at last week, we saw the same thing. Will Sanders started, he went an inning. Then you had Danny Lloyd go an inning. Then you had guys like John Gilreath and Jackson Phipps and, and a bunch of other guys come in the game and pitch. I will be pretty surprised if the Gamecocks completely go away from that Johnny Holstaff approach. And again, I know that's like nails on a chalkboard for a lot of you guys listening. But again, hear me out. When it comes to the game of baseball and college baseball in the postseason, you're going to need these other guys on the staff to be ready to go. You can't just not throw them the entire year. You just can't do it. It'd be a bad idea to do so because you're going to get to a point in an SEC series in a postseason series where you need other arms. And if they haven't thrown all season or they don't have experience or they haven't been thrown in the fire, well, you're putting yourself in a really, really tough position. The midweek is the opportunity to get guys out there that don't normally throw on the weekends. That's just the point. Now, again, does Will Sanders maybe go three or four innings instead of going one inning? That has yet to be seen. Because I think with the game being on Tuesday, I think that does make a difference. Because, again, in, in regards to bouncing back, and you, you want a guy like Will Sanders, especially with Florida coming to town, you want a guy like Will Sanders to be ready on Friday, on Saturday. You want to be able to use him. I think if he goes three or four innings on Tuesday versus on a Wednesday, he'll be ready to go. So do they stretch him out? I don't know. But, guys, I, I just don't think you're going to see South Carolina go away from – getting a bunch of different arms out there. There's guys they want to give looks to. Listen, you have, a, like I said, you got a good problem. You got a lot of guys who are really, really talented who want the baseball, who want an opportunity. And again, the midweek is the time to do so. I know the number one goal is to win the baseball game. 110%, that is the, the number one goal. And I agree with everyone that nobody wants to watch a game like we watched last week, where it's just a revolving door in the pitcher's mound and guys aren't getting the job done. And we see a bunch of walks and we see a bunch of hits and the game drags on. It's a four hour game. Nobody wants to see that, but I also think you're just, you're not going to see at any point this season, or at least I'd be very surprised if you did a situation where you have a guy go six or seven innings in the midweek. I just, I just don't think it's going to happen. You have a lot of quality arms. You have a lot of arms that are fighting for innings and the best time to give a lot of these guys, these innings and give these guys opportunities is in the midweek. But again, what to watch for, what's going to happen. Does do Mark Kingston, Skylar Mead, do they go with that Johnny whole staff approach or do they stretch a guy like Will Sanders out? Do they let him go three, four five innings and maybe, Not quite as much go towards every single inning trotting out a new pitcher. Should be interesting to see. Something else I'll be watching for, for sure. And again, this all leads to and focuses on getting ready for the weekend, right? Because we all know what's ahead for South Carolina in regards to that big weekend series at Founders Park against the Florida Gators. But you certainly can't look ahead of Citadel because they're a very quality baseball team, as we saw the last time. And by the way, speaking of the Johnny Holstaff approach, This was the Citadel the last time the Gamecocks played him. An inning, an inning, two-thirds, a third, an inning, two innings, an inning and a third, zero innings, two-thirds innings, one inning. Those were their pitchers. Those were their pitchers. So the Citadel had the exact same approach that the Gamecocks did on the mound. I just want to make that point. But, uh, you know, again, all of this is in preparation for a big weekend series against the Florida Gators. We all know that. We all know how big that series is. We all know how important it is. But again, you cannot look past this game tonight at Founders Park. My question is this, because we all understand the struggles that the Gamecocks have had offensively, the Gamecocks have had in the box. We all know the, the, the slump, the cold streak, if you will, that has gone on. My question is not just can the bats get going against the Citadel and start to, again, build some confidence. You know, you look at that Sunday Vandy game, you know, you scored six runs in the last six innings. So you feel like you were finally able to get your bats going. But in this game tonight, not just can you get the bats going, but can you get the bats going 
early. You look at the last time South kind of played Citadel. You know, you actually went down in that game two to nothing after the first inning. You didn't score until the third inning in that game. You finally put up a four spot, and then you scored another run in the fourth, and it was a, a five spot for you as a team all the way until the eighth inning when you exploded for six runs. I think it's important for South Carolina in this one to, again, to continue to build that confidence offense. Because, again, I think we all agree that the pitching is going to carry this team very far this season. The question every single game and certainly every single weekend is going to come down to, can you do enough at the plate? Can you do enough at the plate to win? I think it's important to get the bats going early in this one, build some confidence, jump out to a lead, get your guys at the top of the lineup going, get guys like Braylon Wimmer and Wes Clark and David Mendham and Andrew Eister, get them going early, build some early confidence, build some early momentum, and I think that will spell a really successful night at Founders Park for you tonight. Um, something else I'll be watching for, again, sticking with that, sticking with offensively, is it going to be the same lineup we saw on Saturday and Sunday, basically the weekend, or do we see a lot of shuffling? You know, last week on Wednesday, uh, we saw Jalen Vasquez jump in the starting lineup. You know, we saw some other shuffling there as well. Do we see Mark Kingston stick with that lineup from Sunday, or does he do more shuffling? Does he give some guys that don't normally play chances? Because, again, the midweek is certainly the time to do that, do that. But I will say this, because I know Mark Kingston has caught some heat from fans this year, and there's a lot of you out there that are still kind of in the middle on the fence about Mark Kingston. Listen, that's totally fair. You're entitled to your opinion. But I think something that Mark Kingston did on Sunday that he initially caught heat for that I think was actually genius was keeping the same lineup from Saturday to Sunday. After you got no hit, keeping the same lineup. You might be saying, Chris, what are you talking about? I think that actually was a smart move. And I'll tell you why, because in a season, you know, you, you've got your nine guys, right? You're putting your best nine out there, the guys that you feel give you the best chance to win. And with guys, for example, like a David Mendham or like a Brennan Malone or like an Andrew Eister, you know they're good hitters. You've seen them all off season. You've seen them in practices. You've seen them in scrimmages. You know they are good hitters. And at some point, they are going to hit. But I can tell you this, it's really hard as a hitter, just like playing quarterback or just like any other position on any other sport, it's very hard to build consistency or gain confidence or, you know, get settled in when the lineup is constantly shifting and changing and you're moving up and down and you're in the lineup, out the lineup. I think Mark Kingston actually did himself a huge favor and this team a huge favor, keeping the lineup the same from Saturday to Sunday. Because there were some guys that, over the course of the weekend, did not have a good weekend that you saw, hey, start to figure it out on Sunday. And certainly it helped you weren't facing a top five pick anymore. But I think you need, I think it would better serve this team and better serve this offense if you were to find those nine guys, find the guys that you feel are your best nine. And I'm not saying don't change out guys ever, or don't shuffle the lineup ever, because that's baseball, right? You, you, you've got to try different combos and you got to try things that work until you find something that works. But if you keep shuffling around, if you keep moving guys in and out, it's going to be hard to find those nine. It's going to be hard to find that combination that works. I'd like to see South kind of trot out there with the exact same lineup they had. Again, if you want to give Colin Burgess a break and have Wes Clark catch, I, I, I think that's the right move. Definitely. I'm not saying there can't be any tweaks and changes, but I think there are certain guys, your main guys, guys like Brendan Malone, David Mendham, uh, you know, of course, Wimmer, of course, Allen, Eister, these guys, continue to get them at the ABs. Let them build confidence. Let them build a sense of identity. Let them work on their games. Because, again, even if a guy is cold, even if a guy is struggling, there are certain guys that you're like, you know what? You might be struggling. You might be cold. You might not be seeing it right now. But eventually, good hitters are going to hit. Good hitters are going to hit. You've got to trust that. At some point, if a guy just doesn't have it this year, so be it. You can make the change at that point. But you got to believe that good hitters are going to hit. So, again, I'll just be curious to see – you know, I'm sure there's going to be some tweaks and some shuffling in this lineup, but just how much is there? Because, again, I really do credit Mark Kingston. I think he did a great job on Sunday by not just, you know, a lot of coaches would have said, oh, my God, we got no hit. We got to completely change the lineup. We got to shift everything up. We got to move this guy here, that guy there. We got to put this guy on the bench. Got to put this guy in. I think it was a calm approach. I think it was a mature approach to say, you know what? 
We still trust our guys. We trust the, these nine guys. We're going to roll out there with them. We trust that our hitters are going to hit. And I think it paid off big dividends for you, especially late in that game on Sunday. So, again, what do they do with the lineup? I'll be very, very curious to see in this ball game tonight. And then finally, guys, what I'll be watching for, again, certainly you're not overlooking the Citadel. I think that would be a major mistake because we all saw what happened the last time the Gamecocks played. I mean, that was a game, again, you were down six to five going into that eighth inning. I mean, that was a game certainly that you were trying to keep keep your, uh, you know, your perfect record alive, if you will. And, and uh, you were certainly on the verge of losing that game, no question. But it is about you want to beat the Citadel, continue to build momentum for what is setting up to be a huge weekend at Founders Park against the Florida Gators. You know, after starting SEC play one and two, and, and it was a series, listen, you go to Nashville, and when you looked at that one in the preseason, that was one – that from the fan and the analyst perspective, you said, hey, just don't get swept. If you can win the series, if you can steal it, that's great, and that's obviously the goal, but just do not get swept. Because we all know how good Vandy is. We know what they offer on the mound. We know they have rocker and lighter. It's going to be a tall task, but you cannot get swept. Getting that Sunday win was big, especially in the way and the manner that you did it, coming back, getting down early, coming back, finding a way, battling, win anyway, finding a way to win that game. Now you go out, you do your job, you handle your business, you get a big win tonight. It's about building momentum. It's about continuing to stack good days on good days on good days. Hey, baseball is truly a game of momentum. Having Uncle Mo in your dugout is paramount. It is. It's important. Winning a game like tonight and taking care of your business is of utmost importance. Again, I'm curious to see, too, the guys – overall energy and enthusiasm and, and because you know people questioned that last week when we talk about that Davidson game you know you lost your last midweek game bottom line you lost it and you looked bad doing it some people would say you looked embarrassing doing it and I said after that one you know I, I'm not going to be the guy to question the guys want to and say they didn't want to play but I will say this every single game you treat every single game the same exact way because you never know when it might be your last opportunity to put on the jersey. You never know. You never know when that last game will come. It might not come for 20 years. It might come tonight. You never know. It, it's just like the, uh, the movie Moneyball, if you guys have ever seen that. It's a kid's game. Some of us are told at 18. Some of us are told at 42. But we're all told at some point we can't play the child's game anymore. Treat every game the same exact way, whether it's a Friday against Florida or it's a Tuesday against Citadel. It doesn't matter. It's a baseball game. And I think we're going to see tonight the, the maturation of this baseball team. If they understand that, if they have that mentality of, hey, doesn't matter who we're playing, we're South Carolina. We're going to go handle our business. We're going to take care of business no matter who is on the diamond with us. And again, it's about building momentum for a really, really big weekend. Because again, you salvage that Sunday game, you can get a win tonight, and maybe if you can look good doing it, if you can swing the bats a little bit, you feel good in your pitching. You know, all of a sudden, even after you lost six in a row, winning cures all. You say, hey, we're on a little bit of a winning streak. We won back-to-back -back games. We go into the weekend with some newfound confidence. And again, it sets up for a really, really big weekend at Founders Park and a weekend that you're going to be looking to take two or three, bottom line. So... Can they do it? Can they do it? Hey, let's talk about key player for tonight. And this is a guy for me that I think just really needs to get it going. And I believe he will, and I trust he will. And certainly there's a lot of guys in the South Carolina lineup right now that need to get it going, right, especially after a weekend against uh, against Vandy pitching. Man, that, that'll hurt your offensive stats. That'll hurt your feelings. I think South Carolina after the first two games, and, of course, you got no hit in the second game, but I think they were hitting like .053 or something like that. After the first two games, I mean, it, you know, I, I haven't looked at the at the uh, at the series stats or anything for the hitters, but I, I'm sure they were hitting like 150 for the weekend. I mean, it, it hurts your feelings. You know, they're, they're, that Vandy pitching staff is going to hurt a lot of offenses feelings this year. But one guy in particular that I think is just and I know is just such a big piece of this lineup. And to me, it's so important that he get going for the Gamecocks. He's one of the catalysts, if you will, one of the catalysts, in my opinion, and the last time South Carolina played the Citadel, he went one for three with two RBIs and two walks. Had a really, really good game. And that player is Andrew Eister. He's my key player for tonight. And, again, it, it more so goes into 
not just having a good game tonight and, and building confidence and beating the Citadel and contributing this one, but building confidence going into the weekend against Florida. Because this is a guy you're going to need in SEC play. It, it just bottom line. He's a senior. He's a leader for you. Uh, again, he is a spark plug. He's a catalyst for you right there in the middle lineup, right there in the five hole. You need him swinging the bat well. You need Andrew Eister swinging the bat well. And I think you saw that, you know, a little bit later on Sunday. You know, he had that really hard hit ball on Saturday that, you know, I think against any other center fielder is most likely a double and, and you know, multiple runs score. And we're talking about him having a great day, great day at the plate on Sunday. But I want to see Andrew Eister, you know, get back to the Andrew Eister we all know and love, driving the ball opposite field. You know, nobody loves to go oppo more than Andrew Eister, right? Nobody loves the right center gap more than Andrew Eister. I want to see that again because when Andrew Eister's swinging it at his best, that's where he's hitting the baseball. Not that he can't pull it, but when he is swinging it well, that's where he's going. He's going right center. He's going right side with it. I want to see a guy letting the ball get deep, driving the baseball the other way. I want to see that be his approach. And again, start to just, again, get back to building confidence and being that guy we know he can be. That, that's the guy I really want to see stand out tonight. So again, my key player for tonight, Gamecock senior outfielder, Andrew Eister. All right, let's move into my prediction. Let's talk about it. South Carolina taking on the Siddle. Can the Gamecocks go 2-0 and against the Bulldogs this season? And again, this one is just really interesting because, you know, even going a couple of weeks weeks ago when these two teams played initially, you know, the the in-state um, – the in-state storyline is always cool. When South Carolina is able to play an in-state team and, and these in-state teams, you know, they take it very personally and it, it, it's a big deal for them because to take on the, you know, the big bad Gamecocks or even when they play Clemson or whatever, you know, these guys that that don't go to South Carolina and Clemson, they all have chips on their shoulders, you know, feel like they were they were slept on or, or whatever it might be. Maybe if they didn't get an offer, they didn't get this, they didn't get that, whatever. And it, it always makes it really, really fun. Um, but like I said, the emotions carrying over from that last one, that, that really adds a, a very interesting piece to this game. And I just wonder how much, if any, of that emotion is still going to be lingering. Because, again, these two teams were not fond of each other. These two teams were not fond of each other the last time they played. Um, I expect a very another very intense game. I, I think that it will be chippy yet again. I think these are two intense squads that love to play the game of baseball. And I, I don't think – I'll tell you this. I don't think you're going to see a South Carolina team come out flat like we saw last week against Davidson. I, I don't think that'll be the pro, the approach. I think you're going to see a Gamecocks baseball team that after that win, especially Sunday against Vanderbilt, is fired up, that's inspired, that's excited to play the game, that's going to play the game the right way, that's going to come out with a chip on their shoulder and going to be you know bouncing around. It's going to be a beautiful night at Founders Park tonight. I think it's like mid-70s. I mean, it's – it's going to be a great night for baseball in Columbia. With that being said, you know, you've gone through the gauntlet the last two weekends, undoubtedly, with Texas pitching, with Vandy pitching. And listen, Citadel pitching is very good. They're very good. They're quality. You know, they held you in check for most of the game a couple of weeks ago. But I think the Gamecocks are going to be better off for it for weathering the storm of Texas and Vandy and what they've seen on the bump. I think the Gamecocks will take care of business early in this one. I think they will have success at the plate. And I think on the mound, it'll be a mixed bag. You know, I think it will be, for the most part, Johnny Holstaff. Maybe Will Sanders goes two or three for you. But again, I think you're going to see a lot of arms out there. I think guys like Jackson Phipps, Josiah Seitler, um, maybe, you know, Mag Cotto gets back out there. Maybe John Gilreath gets back out there. Maybe Parker Coyne gets back out there. Brett Thomas. Who knows? There's a lot of guys. Cam Tringali. There's a lot of guys that need innings for you. So I think you are going to see a lot of arms. But overall, I do think the Gamecocks will pick up the win. I think, again, this is going to be a team that is focused, that is ready to go, that is fired up, that's going to play like they love the game, that's going to play inspired baseball, that's going to play baseball the right way, going to play the Carolina way. And I think they will – get the win, guys, and continue to build that momentum. Because, again, I think this team is going to understand. I think this team is going to understand how important it is to, again, show up to the ballpark, take care of business no matter who you're playing, but especially to build that momentum up to go into the weekend against Florida. Because, again, if you don't win this game, if you don't take care of your business, I'm not saying that, oh, the Florida series is a wash and you have no chance, but it's just really going to put a damper on going into that weekend against Florida. It's really going to put a damper on your hopes and aspirations for winning two of three and, and coming into Friday night fired up with Thomas Farr on the mound at your home park. It's just, 
it's not going to have the juice to it, the, 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 the electricity to it that we're all hoping for. So, again, I think this team realizes it. I think they'll take care of business. Again, I got the Gamecocks winning this one. South Carolina 9, Citadel 5. And, again, I think the South Carolina Bats will come out early. Do not be surprised to see South Carolina put up a two or three spot in the first inning. I think South Carolina comes out locked in, ready to go. Expect Citadel again to go Johnny Holstaff. They'll throw a lot of pitchers. They'll throw a lot of arms. But, again, I do think South Carolina is able to get the win in this one and get it pretty comfortably. Again, Gamecocks 9, Citadel 5. And, again, it's going to be an absolutely picture-perfect night for baseball at Founders Park. Cannot wait for it. Again, yours truly will be there in person. So, if you're at the ballpark, let's say what's up. Let's talk Gamecocks. I'd love to chat it up with you guys. But, again, I got the Gamecocks getting the win nine to five in this one. All right, that's going to do it for me, guys. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Real quick before we wrap it up, news and notes, Gamecocks were ranked 25th in the D1Baseball.com poll that came out yesterday. I mean, overall, you know, you drop, whatever. It, guys, it's it's a middle-of-the-season poll. Like, at the end of the day, who really cares? It doesn't really mean all that much, but, I mean, you know, whatever. It's something to talk about. But, anyways, Gamecocks are ranked 25th, so hopefully the guys are using that as fuel and kind of have, have a chip on their shoulders and – you know, hey, you go beat Citadel, go, you go win two out of three from Florida, you're going to move back up in the polls. So, whatever. Take care of your business, and that'll take care of itself. Also, guys, it is game day for South Carolina women's basketball as well. I want to remind you guys, South Carolina, Oregon State tonight, 7 o'clock. Gamecocks looking to advance to the Sweet 16. Do not sleep on Oregon State. This should be a really, really good game. We'll be following along as we're at the baseball game, but should be a lot of fun. Again, I expect Don Staley and crew to have no problem with Oregon State, but – it is the NCAA tournament, March Madness. You never know what could happen. But again, guys, that's going to do it all for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Go Cox, beat Citadel, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah.